Welcome back. Well, as pets age, some changes can happen in their mind and their body, and it may be more than just getting older, right? So there is an Alzheimer's like condition that dogs can develop, and our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, is here to help us learn what that is and what can be done for our pets that may have it. Good morning, doctor. You know, I didn't even think about that. So, what is yeah. cognitive dysfunction syndrome, is what it's called, right? And yeah. how does that work with like aging dogs? It's really tempting to call it Alzheimer's in dogs, and there may be some research that shows that they're very similar or even that they are the same process but right now we only know that there's cognitive changes which means mental changes and um, but it does happen as pets are aging um, we see this uh, fairly commonly in dogs and so this is more characterized and focused today on dogs um, but this is a, a change that occurs and I think it's important for people to be aware of because many times we've talked about arthritis looking like old age well sometimes uh, there's actual neurologic changes that are actually involved so this is very similar to dementia in humans and it uh, can affect dogs in a similar sort of way very gradual slow and onset may be um, missable initially and then uh, becomes more aware later on but it affects mental and awareness functions um, some of the training that might have been trained in might be lost mm. and uh, but we do see this like I said more in, in older pets okay so what are some of the signs that you were talking about training that might be lost so what are other signs that you might see I guess maybe behavior changes yep it's mostly in regard to brain function and behavior training and so a lot of the training that might have been in place seems to be lost so pets will do some very unusual things uh, this is um, some uh, uh, general aspects of what it is, there's a, an abbreviation called uh, D-I-S-H-A-A, -A, and I want people to kind of keep that in mind, a dish out, but uh, disorientation might be things like uh, uh, losing purpose and reason for going into another room or going to the hinge side of the door instead of the knob side of the door. Interaction changes could uh, involve uh, either less interactions, less social ability, or even uh, aggression or fear of new circumstances. When it comes to sleep and wake cycles, sometimes that's going to be in regard to changes in um, the sleeping through the night or getting up in the middle of the night or maybe even vocalizing during the night. And then the H stands for house training. House training habits that might have been well learned might be lost because pets are not figuring out or remembering some of the ways in which things were done previously. So having accidents in the house, yes, there could be medical reasons, but sometimes it's about behavior. The next one is about A or activity changes. Some pets are either less active or become hyperactive, hmm. maybe even having repetitive um, patterns like uh, circling or tail chasing uh, in their older age and then finally anxiety and what we know about Alzheimer's in people and dementia these things can be very anxiety producing and while it can be thought of in people as being uh, you know wondering why some of the changes are occurring with pets it can be the same way it's just less understood but sometimes anxiety is a principal sign of, uh, of pets that are showing um, or developing because of the confusion changes. not knowing what to do and making them anxious because I should know Know this or I kind of feel like this is familiar to me but I don't really know and, and not being able to vocalize it it's not like they could talk although if the pet did talk you'd probably be <laughs> you'd probably be running you'd be calling a different type of doctor if your pet <laughs> talked to you but um, how um, is this cognitive dysfunction syndrome how is it actually diagnosed well this is the tricky part about it it is diagnosed not by a test I mean if we have diabetes we can do a blood test and see that things are there with this it's more about seeing the signs documenting the signs and having your veterinarian use a checklist uh, that can help to identify whether this seems to be the case. This is that checklist that I was talking about and it is available through the Purina Institute. And I have a link or I can send it to people if they're interested in filling out the home questionnaire so that they can know about some of the things that um, are recognizable at home. This questionnaire is very helpful and functional in going through all of those different areas that people might recognize. Hold up changes. a little higher, Dr. Dave. Hold oh, up yes, a little higher. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. And uh, so there's a, a multi-page um, aspect to this where it can be filled out. You can take this to your veterinarian and then be able to have them That's have like a, tool. a head start. Exactly. Yeah. So this evaluation tool will help to um, identify whether this is uh, something that is to be considered or not. Typically, um, when we uh, talk about treatment, this is the starting point, is, is um, knowing whether the signs are supportive of this. Not all signs have to be present, but enough of them need to be present to kind of tip the scales toward considering that as the diagnosis. Uh. So in the unfortunate event that maybe, you know, your pet is checking off every single symptom of this and that, is, is there a way that you can help dogs that have CDS or is there, are there some type of better way to care for them? 
One of the things that I think would characterize this is that we are managing something that is progressive. So we can slow the progression, we can create adaptations for pets that are going through this. And I think that's the most important part. So establishing a predictable routine makes a lot of sense. We need to make sure that pets are not experiencing a lot of change because they won't be ready for that. Changing furniture around is a hard thing. I understand if there's no choice and whether you have to move, but that's going to be a difficult thing for an older pet as well. Providing mental stimulation or purposeful activity is really important to keep the mind stimulated. Keep the activity going. We know this is the case in people as well. And then when it comes to managing this, there are brain health nutrition supplements. There's a prescription diet for brain health that basically increases the amount of uh, fatty acids that are provided and supplements can include uh, fatty acids. Let your veterinarian be the guide there. When it comes to prescriptions, only one medication has been approved for this. The one called Selegiline that is listed there has been approved for use in cognitive dysfunction in dogs. But as I said, anxiety is a big part of this, and sometimes using anti-anxiety medication for pets that are experiencing cognitive changes, that can also help either along with or instead of uh, that medication selegiline that I mentioned. Oh, wow. That is, that is a lot of information. I mean, I didn't know that, but I know if you do wish you want to get that assessment, that CDS mm -hmm. assessment tool, you can um, go on. You can email me and I can okay. get it sent to you. All right, so you can contact the pet vet, Dr. David Visser, <laughs> for any other reason also, too. You can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS or, again, shoot him an email at michianapetvet at comcast.net. He answers because I email him, so I know he answers. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. Thanks, Dr. Dave.